Marie Juliette Steinswald, today's host, and I would like to welcome you to another episode of Let's Talk Film, a series where contemporary women get a chance to have their voices heard on the latest film releases. We will be reviewing today the insightful film, which is available online, called Women to Women, co-directed by the mother and daughter team Veronique Dombe and Malika Franklin. We're shooting here at the Pink Tea Cup, one of the most iconic soul food restaurants in New York City. Currently located on 6th Avenue near the corner of 14th Street where the neighborhoods of Greenwich Village and Chelsea meet. The hustle and bustle of urban life is alive and well here. And the Pink Tea Cup, famous for its chicken and waffles and great down home dishes. Let's go downstairs and try some finger licking good goodies. And now we're here with Lawrence, the owner of the Pink Tea Cup. Uh, so uh, the Pink Tea Cup is one of the most iconic soul food places in New York City. But I understand this location is quite fairly new. Yes. So tell us about the history of the place. Pink Tea Cup been around since 1952, I believe, 54. Mm -hmm. uh, been around a long time. Uh, I was a customer of the Pink Tea Cup. Uh, I've owned it for the last five years. I bought the brand and uh, took it to a different level. I would say the next level and uh, tried to, you know, take Pink Tea Cup as a history for the first black American soul food restaurant in New York City. And uh, it's, it's the home of many different celebrities. You got Bill Cosby, Oprah Winfrey, you got Martin Luther King and Malcolm X even had dinner at the Pink Tea Cup. It goes back way back then. So it's always been that place that was in the West Village, New York, near Tribeca. Uh, Greenwich Village downtown, you know, right. it's always been yeah. a staple down there and it's always been the home of like, uh, I hate to say it, but you know, you had celebrities, you had pimps, it was known for that place where everybody greeted and just had a good time and ate soul food. So, you know, year after year, tradition after tradition, you kept it going, you know, with the new celebrities and everybody that came out now, I mean, it was a thing to do, like if you're in New York City and you want something to eat, you gotta go to the Pink Tea Cup, you know. So what about the, the menu? Did you keep the original? Did you kept, have new staples? I kept the original or? menu. I kept the original menu, but I did take some things off it, and I added okay. some things only because time changed. But uh, the menu is still the same, and uh, we're adding more, you know, uh, with salmon, pineapple salmon, grilled salmon, and things of that nature onto the menu as we go along. But we have to slowly introduce the new people, all the younger people who don't know about the history of the pink teacup. That's why we added chicken and waffles to the menu. Right. Which is doing very well for us. Yes, yes. yes. I, I just had a taste and it's absolutely delicious. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Do you have any specials? What I want to let people know is that I wouldn't say special, but I would say pink teacup is now expanding. So okay. you'll, you'll see it now in like Brooklyn and Fort Greene. Oh, okay, yeah. so you're opening new yeah, places. Yeah, new place over there. You'll mm -hmm. see it in West Hollywood and uh, Santa Monica and La Cienega. Oh, wow. So you'll see it there. And, uh, yeah. that, you know, we're just trying to take Pink Tea Cup all over the world and let it be an iconic soul food place that started here and now it's all over the world. So I just want everybody to know, like, if you're ever in New York City, you definitely got to look it up, you know, come to it, check it out. You always got, you know, your industry people in there. You always Somebody's always famous in the Pink Tea Cup eating it every day. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, to the simple guy living in uh, Idaho, you know, sitting on a couch, you know, he's always coming to the Pink Tea Cup. So it's just a great thing, you know. Yeah. So you got to experience it just for the experience, you know. Okay. All right. Thank well, you. good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's meet our panelist, Valerie Peterson. Nice to have you here. Thanks, MJ. Nice to be here. Valerie Peterson is a writer and filmmaker, the author of four books. Her screenplays have been recognized by the Austin Film Festival, Sedona International Film Festival, CineQuest, among others. Whatever. Today we will be discussing the online film, Woman to Woman, co-directed by the mother and daughter team of Veronique Dumbe and Malika Franklin. Having viewed this film, would you consider New York City a sound place to raise a daughter? I would definitely say so. I would say that it sounds like the challenges are a little different. The moms are all very self-aware that um, there's dangers, but there's opportunity at the same time. There's you know culture to be culture to be seen and had, but that there's also um, maybe a little extra caution that's required. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And New York City is so much safer than it used to be. New York City is a jungle, obviously, because it's a big city. So it's risky too, don't get me wrong, but the, I think the, 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 the mothers are very much aware of the complexity of this. And the daughters, I was very much impressed with how mature they are 
and how well they know their city and how street smart they are. Yes. And I, I wonder, I, I wondered about like the chicken and the egg factor. Like, does the city make them more independent and self-aware, or and and they seem more mature, um, or or does are they here because you know they're mothers are inherently raising them that way. You know what I mean? I, I kind of didn't know whether what the cause and effect of the city was versus just them being raised by moms who were aware of the city. I don't right, know if that makes but sense. Like, I feel like New York City is such a special place because you're a New Yorker or you're not. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and j Even just, when you have a French accent, you're a New yes. Yorker, right? <laughs> yeah, do you feel the themes presented in the film were specific to mother-daughter experiences in New York City or universal? I think that um, the worry is probably universal and the concerns are universal. I think the environment makes them um, just skews them slightly, you know, in a different, in a little different direction. But some of them are obviously um, only apply to the environment of a big city. And, you know, just because of public transportation. <laughs> that was brought up in the film, actually, where that's one concern that parents don't, don't have, have is yes. drinking and driving because right. nobody actually drives in the city. So yes. that's, a, that's actually an interesting point. Right. There's a lot of other worries, but drinking and driving is a, is a dramatically less, um, less of a worry for a lot of these moms. Do you think the, this film creates uh, an an open dialogue for mother and daughters uh, to discuss sensitive issues. Where I thought it um, might actually, I don't know why I thought this, because I feel like maybe the teenage daughters are kind of like, even in the film, they're like, I don't worry so much, don't do this so much. I almost felt like it was a better vehicle for a dialogue in mother, mothers to mothers, like opening up um, some of the issues that they all face and that maybe, mothers of teenage daughters don't have as much interaction, natural interaction, because their kids are older and more independent. Yeah, I was, um, I was touched by that woman who, who talked about the lack of support uh, yeah, for that's, parents to yeah. mothers to get together. <gasps> so do you think this film has the potential to become a historical or, ar or archival resource? I thought, yeah, I thought it was a little slice of sociology, I guess. And, and one of the interesting things about it was that, and this I think also speaks to the New York City-ness of it, is that it was completely multicultural. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt, you know, um, one woman was Cuban, I think one was obviously East Indian, like they, they, like whatever the culture was, yes. um, you just got, got the, the concerns were the same and maybe they were expressed a little differently, but they were the same And uh, at the end of the day. So did you like or dislike the movie? <laughs> oh, I liked it. You know, I felt like it went down very easily. I don't know how else to say it. I felt like the it's 40 minutes and it, it just flew by. I, I, yes. I just felt yeah, like it, the, it, was, the, it w was paced well. Yes, and, the flow was and nice. I, I was interested in everything. There wasn't, um, there wasn't a lot of waste of time or a, a lot of, you know, it was, it kept, it moved nicely and, um, and the subject was, you know, definitely interesting. Yes, and you, you had so many points of view and so many, uh, so many, so many opinions and so many backgrounds. Yeah. That uh, yeah, I, I really liked uh, the florality. You had a very, a very yes. um, interesting and slice all, of the city and, and, and many, many religious views too. I got the impression, like you know, that liberal, conservatives. Pretty yeah. much every, every, everything was represented. Every yeah, and yeah. and again, the concerns were more similar than than not, you know, yes. despite whatever the views yes. were, you know. What were the weaknesses or strengths of the film? Yeah. I wouldn't say strength or weaknesses. I mean, I, I want to take the film on its own merits. Mm -hmm. um, as a viewer, I actually, and I, I understand why the filmmakers did what they did, but I actually would have liked a little more information on each of the people. I felt like it would have informed um, and maybe that's why they didn't do it because they wanted it to seem they wanted to show the similarities. But I felt like I wanted to know each of the people a little more, 
And um, in the structure of that film, without like a narrative thread of an actual mother-daughter interacting or something like that, I felt like I, I would have at least liked um, to know their names, to know maybe what neighborhood they were living in. Um, again, because it's a city film. Yes, me too. This film was co-directed by a mother and daughter team. What were your thoughts on their directing? I, you know what, I did not know that when I watched the film and I would not have been able to tell. Um, and I did not realize there were diff two different directors till after I watched it. Because, because it was, <laughs> because the editing is so well done, like I didn't see any different take at all, like it's, you know, from one director to the it's other. It's, it's a great idea for the topic because, you know, you're getting, um, you're getting a peer-to-peer -peer interview. What did you think of the cinematography? All the individuals interviewed were so unique in their own looks, and there really was a, a cross-section of, um, you know, just different types of women. Each person was an individual, and it was shown in this very bright outdoor way. I mean, I don't, I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the cinematography. Yes, it was, uh, it was pleasing to the eye. <laughs> oh, and you know what? I guess the other thing about it. And it just hit me, because it didn't occur to me before, we saw so much of New York City in the background. Yes, that's that what I was love, about to say. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, that, that lovely, you saw the bridges, you saw the yes. water, you saw the city, you saw the backs of buildings, you know, in a neighborhood. I felt like it was really, um, it, it made the city shine in, right. in a lot of yes, ways. Yes, and New York City became a character, a visual, uh, you know, a character yeah. you could see. As well as the ca as yeah. well as a major character yeah. in the documentary, because it's all about raising daughters in New York City. It was uh, it was nice because it was very simple. It's very simple, simply framed, but at the same time, there's an openness. Yes, and it shows it shows the city in its brightest lights. Yes. How was your viewing experience of this film? It was fine overall. Yeah, it was yeah. fine. I mean, in terms of the, the, the experience of downloading and streaming or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, it was fine. It was actually um, better than I expected. Fortunately, my computer was down, so I watched yeah, it on my you Nook. Watched it on your Nook. But see, that's good, too. It, that's it actually was good. great. Yeah, it was you know? good. Who do you think should see this film? And who do you think will see this film? Um, I really do think that it would be informative for moms of teenage girls or even moms of... Um, you know, preteens who are going to be going into it soon. But, um, you know, I, I think that probably it is a good dialogue opener. You know, in terms of who will see it, I would imagine that mom groups and mm -hmm. things like that would want to would wanna access it. Yeah. If they hear about it, yes. So it's, it's, uh, I think it's going to be a good help, that film, for, you know, because I know... I don't know it by experience, but I, I've heard that teen, being a parent to a teenager can be really, really hard. Would you recommend this film to others? Yes, I, I would. I actually um, have a few friends who are raising daughters in the city, mm -hmm. and I was thinking, oh, you know what, I should really forward this. <laughs> if you weren't on this panel, would you have watched this film? Probably not. Me neither. I, I, I feel like it came to me sort of interestingly and, you know, and I enjoyed it and I thought, it, you know, I really did find it a little bit enlightening, but um, it, it, at first, mothers and daughters, since I'm a daughter but not a mother, you know, I was right. kind of like, you know, I don't know that I would have um, taken the time to do it, but in watching it, I did feel like it, it was worthwhile. Yes, same here. and. Yeah, because it's not my main interest because I'm not I'm not a mother, but I am a daughter. But once you're watching it, it's very interesting, and it's fun to watch too because they're you know like they, those people really have a sense of humor sometimes. But other than that, I would not have, but I probably would not have heard of it if not for that yeah. panel. And that's the problem with uh, filmmaking nowadays because there are so many films, so many independent films, and so few platforms. <laughs> well, we have run out of time, but I would like to thank you, Valerie, for joining us today for your, and your comments and your thoughts. It's been a pleasure having you with us here today. Again, 
I would also like to thank Lawrence for allowing us to shoot here at the Pink Tea Cup. Today we were discussing the online film, Women to Women, co-directed by the mother and daughter team of Veronique Dombe and Malika Franklin. Be sure to check this out and more on our website online at www.letstalkfilm.com, which is also available on your mobile devices. I'm today's host, Marie-Juliette Steinswald. Until next time, keep watching and keep talking film.